Okay, um, I guess uh, we can get started. Um, hello all, uh, welcome to another Hoodie LinkedIn Live series. My name is Bhavani Sada Sakthishwaran. I'm a PMC member of the Apache Hoodie project and a software engineer at One House. Uh, today we are having an interesting session on incremental data processing uh, with Hoodie, Spark, and DBT by Raymond. Uh, Raymond is a longtime Apache Hoodie PMC member and an open source engineer at One House. Uh, today's talk will be recorded and uploaded to Hoodie's YouTube channel shortly. Uh, we'll also have an open floor towards the end of the session. Meanwhile, uh, feel free to send in your questions via comments uh, in the LinkedIn um, comments section. So uh, without further delay, let me pass it over to uh, Raymond. All right, thank you, Suda. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk about uh, incremental data processing with Hoodie, Spark, and DBT. Um, this talk contains two parts. In the first part, I will go over high-level concepts about Hoodie and incremental processing, and specifically with Medallion data uh, architecture. In the second part, I will showcase Hoodie's CDC change data capture feature with a sample DBT project to illustrate the usage with sample code and configurations. A quick intro for myself. My name is Xi Xu. I'm a PMC member of the Apache Hoodie project, uh, currently working as an open source engineer at uh, One House. Previously, I have led the data lake team at Zendesk productionize large scale Hoodie based data platform. I'm active, on, I'm active on LinkedIn and Twitter, OX. Feel free to connect with me there. I also write blogs on Substack about Hoodie and other data topics. Um, if you are interested, feel free to check it out and feel free to subscribe. Okay, without further ado, let's start by going over the medallion architecture. So this is what uh, a typical medallion architecture would look like. Um, when data is ingested uh, through some upstream uh, data sources, uh, from upstream data sources, uh, it will be unprocessed and stored in a data lake. Typically in this raw layer or bronze layer, there could be a data duplication. Um, there will be also change logs, raw event data, and more. From there, um, data will graduate to a so-called silver layer, um, where you want you may want to perform data deduplication, validation, and optimization, like uh, cleaning to remove the old data, uh, optimize the file sizing, uh, etc. Finally, mo to move from the silver layer to so-called gold layer, you may want to you may run some join queries to um, across uh, different silver tables and create some uh, wide fact tables that you may uh, use for AI or ML applications, uh, BI analytics, uh, and more. So all this seems uh, pretty straightforward. Um, but what does it really take to implement something like this? Uh, let's give a closer look. So in reality, um, people may have implement, uh, implemented the medallion architecture as the diagram shown below, uh, shown here. Um, raw, in the raw layer, um, uh, is also called the bronze layer. Uh, nothing fancy here, raw, da raw data, unprocessed data, uh, ingested uh, from upstream to the data lake storage layer. Um, starting from there, the silver layer, uh, people may have to do like full table scans to grab all the data, including the, the new updates and rewrite the entire silver table with the most recent data. In this process, you might use uh, SQL or Spark or a similar to perform table services like uh, cleaning, to remove old versions or rewrites to improve file sizes. Um, operating all these kind of uh, table services is not a trivial process. You may need to ensure that there are no concurrent write conflicts that could lead to data corruption, data loss, uh, deadlock, um, and also slow read operation and more. So that's about the silver layer. Um, uh, to so moving to next level, the 
to update the gold layer, um, there will be more table scans needed uh, along with more join operations uh, across uh, multiple silver tables. This normally uh, requires creating some uh, time tables to facilitate the whole process. And only after that, the gold table will be will have the up-to-date data uh, to run with analytics queries. You can see that there's a general theme here of scanning the full table and doing uh, full rewrites, which is inefficient and costly. Orchestrating these table services for a large number of tables and handling concurrency issues uh, could be also very challenging. So what is an alternative architecture that might be more efficient? Uh, so let's take a high level look. In this sample architecture with Apache Hoodie, uh, you can ingest data into the raw zone pretty much like what was shown previously. From there, you can do um, what is called incremental processing or uh, of just the new data and update the silver layer. So as table services like cleaning, clustering for optimizing tables, uh, file sizes are supported out of box from Hudi, uh, you could easily configure and manage those jobs, integrate them into pipelines, into those uh, the whole pipeline on this platform. It will have much less operational overhead than what would just need what what would need to do with just Spark. Um, with Hudi, the Upstream changes will be incrementally propagated through the pipelines, and that will efficiently keep the gold layer table up to date. Now that I have uh, introduced, uh, uh, mentioned about Apache Hoodie, let me give an uh, overview and go over uh, what features it can provide uh, in a broader ecosystem. Um, so Hoodie is a transactional data lake platform. Uh, at its core, Hoodie defines a open table format and provides a transactional database layer that provides uh, indexing capability, things like indexing capability, uh, concurrency control, uh, and also change data capture capabilities. Um, a typical data pipeline with Hoodie starts with uh, as you just saw, uh, dumping raw data from application layer uh, like Kafka into a Lakehouse platform. Spark and Flink are the two most common execution engines to work with Hoodie. Um, to clean and transform raw data, Hoodie supports auto file sizing, incremental processing for uh, the change data. Table, uh, it also supports running uh, table services uh, out of box like cleaning, clustering, etc. Also, Hoodie has broadly integrated with data ecosystem, like it supports uh, multiple uh, catalog like uh, Data Hub, um, Hive Meta Store, and BigQuery. It works also with uh, numerous uh, query engines like Presto, Trino, uh, Hive, Link, Spark. Um, so it's a it's uh, well integrated with the whole uh, data ecosystem. So we, we just had a high level overview of the incremental processing through the example of uh, um, of Medallion architecture in the, in the last part. Um, now let's go over um, a more detailed example uh, of using Spark and DBT. Uh, so a quick recap, uh, incremental processing typically begins with extracting data from upstream data source like Kafka and then loading the raw data into the, the storage. Um, so from the raw data bronze layer onwards, uh, there, will, there may be many transformation jobs um, uh, orchestrated in different cadence, moving data across different tables on the lake, data lake uh, platform. So as these number of jobs grows, the, it will be very critical for any organization to be able to uh, conveniently deploying and operating uh, these, jo uh, these jobs. So DBT uh, data build tool is designed to handle transformations. Uh, it's specifically the T in this ELT architecture. 
ELD stands for extract load and transformation. Um, it standardized the way to structure and manage SQLs and config files. It does have a lifting for connecting and building up data pipelines. So for more information, if you're interested, definitely check out this linked uh, blog here. Uh, it is from DBD. It ex clearly explains what uh, DBD, um, uh, what DBD does and, and work for. So um, in the next few pages, we will go through an example project, DBT, and, and see how it defines and runs uh, Hoodie CDC transformation. So to highlight, this is a sample project structure. Uh, to highlight some folders in this, uh, in this structure, the, there's a DBT uh, project or YAML uh, file. Um, Okay, it may have been blocked by my uh, image, but yeah, it's, it's in the bottom that uh, of this folder. Um, it defines the context for the whole project. Uh, it usually involves a bunch of data pipelines. Uh, so the whole the project may usually involves a bunch of data pipelines that uh, depends on each other or related to each other. Um, uh, this YAML file contains project version information, project folder passes, and common settings, etc. So, if you look at the first uh, first row of this this slide, uh, there's a models folder. Uh, models in DBT represents the transformations and uh, the involved group of data sets or tables of the uh, Lakehouse platform. The models folder contains the definition of all the data sets involved by the transformation pipeline um, and also how the transformation logic will look like between those data sets. Um, there's, also a, um, there's also a target folder. Uh, it may also have been blocked. Apology. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, there's a target folder. Um, uh just above the project yaml file um below there's a test uh, sample file so there's a target folder uh contains um uh contains the uh, is generated upon when you when you run the dbt tool the, it will build the project and it will be generated it contains the compiled and the runtime sequels that uh dbt uh, would generate based on the user defined models so whenever the user choose to update some models or settings, uh, and uh, and once the this, uh, once the command of build is run, the containing that target folder will be updated uh, accordingly. So with this project, um, we can do a similar. Uh, so with that project structure, you you, you can. Uh, you can start putting your uh, business logic in, in those model files and configure the schema and then put um, uh, and, and configure the, the actual project settings uh, based on your environment. So building on top of that, we, we will walk through an example of use, use case to illustrate the DBT use uh, with Hoodie incremental processing feature. So we'll be looking at the sample data set that is very simple. Um, the upstream data, data uh, contains some user profile update events. Uh, specifically, it contains the updated CD. So this, the schema is, looks like the CD, uh, user ID, CD, and timestamp. That's just three columns. Um, the transformation, the first, the first transformation process, the raw updates and upsert, perform upsert into a hoodie table and give the latest state, uh, uh, latest in city info for all the users. So that's the raw update to profile uh, the first transformation. The second transformation pulls the changed user profiles and uh, the corresponding changed info uh, to allow downstream job to react. So in this example, um, so for, for example, this would be useful when um, there, this, this, is, this is an app uh, uh, run by some uh, SaaS uh, company that uh, recommend uh, popular events uh, in, some, in, in all different cities. For example, there could be some 
popular live events are planned for CDX. And if there are users who recently changed their profile and update their city from other cities to CDX, the system could grab all these changes and 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 detect who, who has changed this, who has made this kind of change, and then send recommendation email says, "Hey, uh, welcome to CDX, and and there are these kind of events for you to explore." So that will be a a, a great uh, event promotion um, process. So, so to give some um, illustrated uh, to, to illustrate this project with more details, um, let's take a look at the, some some sample uh, sample code. Um, I'm not gonna read through all this code, but just to give a uh, uh, you you just need to um, just uh, pay attention to like some highlighted points. So this this is the first uh, transformation I put in this sample project. It is it's only trying to mock the data ingestion, which would actually happen from some upstream sources to the raw layer. Uh, in this sample setup, um, oh, it's, uh, it, it's just mocking some uh, fixed code, fixed data, like user 101, 102, 103, and who has a city, we initially are in a city ABC. And uh, for this sample project to run, I, I would, simulate some update uh, to update their city to from from ABC to DEF. So that's what you we will see in the in the right side of the slide. Um, the updated table in the raw uh, updates table would look like uh, the bunch of users and all the uh, table uh, all their cities have been updated and there's also an updated timestamp for that. So this is just to simulate upstream changes. And this, the first transformation that DBT can handle is to incrementally process these updates and, and upsert them into a, a table called profiles. So these are all uh, hoodie tables. And as you see, the, uh, the table content looks like uh, there's only three users. There's no duplicate user ID because it's primary key. Uh, cities are up, updated as DEF. Um, so uh, just to highlight some uh, key info on this sample code, um, the, um, there's a configuration called hoodie in the, in the center of this sample code. There's a configuration called hoodie.table.cdc.enable and it's set to true. So this means that uh, when, we, when, we write when we write da uh, data into the profiles table, uh, which is a hoodie table. We want to enable a feature called uh, uh, CDC. Um, it stands for change data capture. What it does is it um, it will uh, when when any new data or any new record right uh, being written into the table, it also locks what has been changed for that particular record in uh, in, in in this table. It will actually record what was this record look like before this change and after this change. And of course, there's a other configuration to help you to fine tune this level of locking, like you only want uh, the, the before uh, image of this record, not the before and after, or you can even reduce it to just saying uh, what key has been changed um, instead of the, the, uh, the full uh, before and after image. Um, so yeah, below below that, there's also a macro defined provided by by DBT. It's called is incremental. Um, this this is a macro to help uh, generate uh, SQL dynamically based on this this templated SQL configuration. Um, when you set the when you set the processing to incremental, um, it would uh, it will, this macro will be activated and. Well, the the whale class will be uh, added to the generated SQL. Um, in this example, I'm adding this updated add larger than the the largest value of of this profiles table, meaning that I only process what um, what is newer than uh, what profile table has. So that's the incremental uh, incremental uh, nature of this uh, processing. 
Similarly, in the second transformation, this is also uh, defined uh, in dbt template. Uh, this is another SQL file that uh, you will store under the models folder. Uh, this is also incremental processing. Um, instead of pulling, uh, instead of uh, doing a, a, a SQL query uh, from the raw table, you, you this this um, this processing leverages the the hoodie. Um, Hoodie CDC feature. So Hoodie in point 14 provides a, a table valued function called the Hoodie table changes. And uh, as you see in the middle part of the, the code, um, you can specify the target uh, table name where you want to pull the CDC changes and you specify the, the mode as CDC. Um, you will also want to give a start timestamp so that it only fetches the the, the changes after that timestamp. So that's uh, by doing this uh, table value, by calling this table value function, you will uh, be able to get uh, what, what record has been changed and what was the data before this change and the data after. Um, so as you see, um, this transformation also, this, this SQL sample code here also does the transformation for uh, Fetching the the new the the newest city from this user, and the the query result is shown on the right side. Uh, it it says okay, this user has changed since that timestamp, and their new city is this uh, DEF. So from here onwards, uh, the SaaS application will probably there could you can easily set a a periodic job that scan this table and, and just fetch what has been um updated in this table and then uh send email recommendation based on uh if the new city equal to x and then uh send a bunch of promotion emails so dbd also provides features like um uh generating the ui for the documentation um uh for ease for for people to easily browsing the the project data sets so when there are hundreds of thousands of data sets in your project and trans and there are uh, even more transformations it is a must-have feature to help uh, users and, and engineers efficiently navigate through all this and locate what they need okay so a quick recap on the hoodie and dbt example uh, dbt naturally supports uh, building incremental pipelines with merge semantics uh, this clicks with what Hoodie is uh, great at, which is incremental, uh, which is incrementally and uh, merging, um, uh, if, uh, merging capability. So Hoodie's CDC feature produces uh, the before and after image of uh, the change record, allowing the rich uh, data transformation capability to support broader business need. Uh, with incremental processing, we can cut down the processing co cost by uh, limiting the amount of I.O. and only process the relevant data. So feel free to check out the sample code. It's available at the Hoodie uh, repository uh, at the master branch. There's a folder called Hoodie example, and then there's a Hoodie example dbt. OK, Hoodie has a lively, engaging community. Check out these links for uh, documentations and code and emailing lists and social platforms. We have uh, active uh, Slack space supported by uh, many Hoodie experts. We are also on LinkedIn, X, YouTube, where you uh, where we share um, great contents and exciting up updates from time to time. Um, that's all uh, for my talk today. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to attend this talk. Uh, if you have any questions, would like to um, or would, would, would like to dive deeper into this topic, uh, feel free to reach out and connect with me. Thank you. Uh, Suda, you may have been muted. Yeah, got it. Uh, thanks, Raymond. That was a very interesting session. I guess we can open the floor for questions from users. Um, feel free to type in uh, in the comment section.
Okay, maybe I can uh, go with one question. Uh, can you um, like help us understand uh, like how uh, basically you would like go over like larger times uh, back in the data in cases of uh, backfill or something like that? Is that possible? Or is it like uh, there is a way uh, to configure this in TBT? Uh, so, I'm yeah, I'm not quite clear about the requirement, but yeah, DBT DBT is uh is just is more about the generating the SQL using templates, and as long as you could uh you could configure that in some form of SQL statement, and uh, yeah, DBT does not stand in your way to to make Got that it. happen. Got it. So as long as you're able to um, look back on the uh, timeline, you should be able to process data uh, if you can represent that. Yeah, if it, the and question is about performing time travel query, yeah, you, you can definitely do that. It's, yeah, you, you can, because it's supported in Houdini SQL, uh, Smart SQL, you can, yeah, then you can make makes, that happen. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, we have one question from Saurabh. Uh, are there any limitations or considerations when using uh, DBT with Houdini? Um, the consideration I would, I would mention like, uh, maybe not all the newest feature would be fully supported, uh, in, in DBT, for example, the table value function that I just mentioned, it typically you would, um, so the con consideration is, um, you might want to, uh, of course this open source project is evolving and then you want to um before some feature is fully supported there may be some uh walk around that you might want to uh, uh take into consideration like the table value function i just mentioned uh it, it works but you will have to make the table name um hard coded there instead of using a macro of a, a reference function um uh because you, you cannot pass a macro of that into that table value function that the uh, that's not supported yet but I, I think, yeah, this feature could be definitely uh, supported later. Yeah. Got it. Um, question from Sagar. Can the code or deck be uploaded somewhere as well along with the video? Yes, um, Sagar, we can upload the, the video is going to be uploaded in YouTube and we can upload the deck as part of uh, comments in section here, or we could also do the um, uh, Dex as part of the site update. That should be accessible. Okay, uh, we can take one more question. Um, let's say I have partition table, how to update the partitions as well as part of incremental data along with only few columns from Pranip. Uh update partition as part as well as part of incremental data um i'm not quite sure about what does update partition means um i i think yeah if usually uh, i guess what you what you're trying to achieve is like the partition is is by day and you are um you're progressing through this um you can definitely do that uh there's nothing prevents you um, as for updating the partition, if that means the partition, the record is updated from partition A to a partition B, um, it's also supported. That would that would require global indexing from Houdi that uh, you would need to enable a flag called update partition pass. And then, uh, yeah, the record will move through a, uh, a partition A to B, if that, that's the question. Yeah, maybe we can uh, follow up with Pranit uh, offline. Uh, I see like a few more questions here in the text section. I don't think we'll have time to go over them live, but uh, we'll be sure to get back to you on the comments uh, to answer each of your questions. But uh, I guess that's uh, that's for today. Uh, see you all today on another session. We have more uh, upcoming events uh, coming up. Like, please check out the. LinkedIn Apache Huri page uh, for events that you can register for. All right. Thank you so much, Raymond. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all for attending today.